All right. As low tech as possible for video recording. Forget that. We got it. We were on the top of the bleacher. All right, so here's what we got on the handout. As soon as Jack's ready. Jack's ready. That's going to be the ground. There's our ramp. Okay, so this problem, you got a ramp. It's at a 35 degree angle to the ground. We're putting a box on it here. Um, and it said it wants to draw a force diagram for that, so we know how to draw a force diagram for a box on a ramp. We need a, ooh, that's not straight. Let's try that again. We have force of gravity pointing down. We've got a normal force from the ramp. Remember, the normal force is force that's perpendicular to any surface that the object's in contact with. We label that Fn, just in case you forget that one. That is our normal force. Normal, of course, in geometry, or if you're doing construction, means perpendicular to a surface. Uh, normal force, and so that's perpendicular to, uh, in this case, ramp. Now, if there were friction, we would draw a friction force, force pointing up the ramp, then that's what would keep it from sliding or make it not slide as fast. But at the top here on this problem, it does say no friction for the first one that you're going to do. Because we like frictionless environments, it makes things easier. So there's our force diagram for the box. OK, then it says it wants you to put some other things in the diagram. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to try and figure out how fast this thing accelerates down the ramp. The box weighs 120 newtons. Okay, they told us that in the problem. But we want to know how fast it could go ahead. Never. Sure. I'm positive. OK. Um, so we're going to try to figure out how fast this thing accelerates down the ramp, just like we've been doing before. So we've been doing acceleration stuff on flat surfaces, Okay, pulling things this way. Resistance that way, you take the force this way, you subtract out the friction. Ooh, then we were pulling at angles, we're pushing at angles, we have to find components first and subtract out the friction, et cetera. And in the end, we always found the net force and we plugged it into F equals MN. So we're going to do the same thing here. So what's going to make this thing slide down the ramp is the gravitational force. Okay? But not all of it. Okay? If we wanted this thing to accelerate just from the force of gravity, we'd have to tilt this ramp all the way straight up. And then it would fall straight down. And then we could say there's 120 newtons making it accelerate. And we would get an acceleration of 10, of course, because all things accelerate down at negative 10 meters per second squared. So here what we want to do, I'm sorry, here what we want to do is we need to figure out of this gravitational force of 120 newtons, how much of that weight's pressing it against the ramp? That's going to equal the normal force. And how much of the weight is really pulling it down the ramp? Because not all of the gravity force is making it accelerate down the ramp. And we talked about this before when we first started talking about ramps. And we said, well, if we tip it up so it's steeper, the gravitational component down the ramp is going to be more, and the amount holding it against the ramp is going to be less. And if, let's say I put a scale under this thing to measure how much it's pushing against the ramp from the gravity force. As I lower the ramp and it gets flatter and flatter, the scale is going to read more and more because the weight's pushing more on the top of the ramp than it is pulling it down the ramp. Yes, sir? If I were to put a scale on the stairs at an angle and still on it, it would be, I would weigh less. Ooh, that one's tricky because to stand on it, you'd still have to stand upright. What if I made <laughs> If you could defy gravity, and lean back. Michael Jackson could. That's true. As you start leaning back, it would weigh less and less, and then of course you'd fall off of it and you'd weigh nothing. So. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. That'd be tricky to do, but if you could, yes, you would be. You would weigh Sweet. Less. OK, so what we want to do is this 120 gravity force, we want to figure out how much of it's making that thing accelerate down the ramp. And to do that, I'm going to show you a picture. Um, but first, um, the one thing that's different about this, remember we were doing, we were doing acceleration stuff uh, in one dimension right from we started. We started with things only moving in the x direction. And then we switched to things only moving in the y direction. And then we got trickier. We said, well, we're going to have stuff that moves in two dimensions, where it's moving this way. Well, it's also changing direction in the y, okay, or changing speed in the y direction. So it's changing in both the x and y direction at the same time. Can you see as this thing slides down the ramp? Okay, it's going to be moving forward in the x direction, getting farther to the right, but it's also going to be moving down in the y direction, getting farther down or lower toward what would be a y axis. Okay, 
That's motion in two dimensions. Now we can handle motion in two dimensions, and we did before, but we had to keep vertical and horizontal separate. Make sure you don't plug this velocity in this equation because that's the x velocity, we need the y velocity, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and eliminate that. And to do that, all we're gonna do is take your x and y Cartesian coordinates, okay, we went for graphing, we're just gonna tilt it, okay, so that it matches the ramp. So I'm gonna really say that this is now gonna be my x-axis. So I'm just tilting my graph paper, essentially. I'm going to make that my x-axis. And then I'm going to make this perpendicular to that, right through the center. I'm going to make this my new y-axis. So instead of keeping x flat with the ground and y perpendicular to the ground, we're now going to tilt that thing this way. And that makes these problems a heck of a lot easier. And the reason why, even when we did projectile motion before, okay, we had a change in velocity in the y direction, where it was slowing down, slowing down, and then speeding up, speeding up as it moved this way. But at least the x stayed the same. We didn't have an acceleration in the x direction. Here you would have both. As this thing slides, it's going to speed up and go faster to the right, and it's also going to start going faster down. So I'm going to have acceleration in the y and x direction. Well, now we don't. Okay, so the x is just going to be the direction it moves. And we essentially now have no motion in the y direction. This thing doesn't rise off the ramp, and it's not going to sink into the ramp, okay, because these two forces wind up equal. Okay, now the force we're talking about there is the amount of the gravitational force pushing it against the ramp. Now I'm going to get rid of my axes, but I'm going to draw back in a vector. So I'm going to take this y, I'm sorry, my, my gravitational force that was in the y direction, and now I'm going to show the component how much of that gravity is pushing it against the ramp, and then how much that gravitational force, and I'm drawing it here for now, but that would really be the amount of the gravity force that's pulling it down the ramp. I'm going to draw that up here also. We're going to call this the force of the gravitational force, the amount of the gravity, gravitational force in the x direction. Just like we did Vx before, Okay, and just like we did f of x when we were pulling at an angle. Okay, and that's really down here as well. Fgx. And then the amount that pushes against it is going to be the force of gravity in the y direction. She's still pointing at me. Sweet. <laughs> Very high tech. And these have to make a right angle because this is, of course, my y-axis and that's my x-axis. So my x and y component vectors make a right angle to each other. Don't make this mistake. I'll get this drawing sometimes. There's the gravity force. And then I'll get this component going all the way down here. And I get this component pointing there. And we make our right angle there. Okay. Uh -uh. We want y and x to make the right angle. Notice also this fx points that way. That's not down the ramp. We want the amount of the gravitational force pointing down the ramp, not directly right. Okay, so this is bad picture. Okay, so this is gonna be our fgy. This is our fgx component. And again, this is gonna be mathematically the same amount that we put up there. This is our head to tail diagram right here. And then all three of these are four vectors coming out of the same point would be our point diagram. But those two red vectors are the same. Now, it turns out we can solve for these. I don't remember my geometric uh, proofs, and I'm sure most of you do because you love those. I haven't done them since ninth grade. I actually did enjoy doing proofs. But this 35 degree angle, I know, shows up here. The more I tilt the ramp up, the more this angle occurs from the normal, okay, or from the perpendicular angle. Okay. There is some, you know, uh, 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 proof um, postulate theorem, I, I can't remember, um, that tells me that, you know, this alternate interior, complements of alternate interior angles are congruent or something like that. I don't remember, but there is something that tells us that. And now you can see between this black, blue, and red triangle, we now have a nice little red triangle with the 35 degree angle. We can solve for those two components like, like you have done in the past. Okay, so solving for the x1, notice this would be my opposite side from the 35 degree angle. 
So if I want to know that value, I'm going to say sine of 35 should be equal to my FGX, the X component of the gravitational force, in other words, the amount of force pointing down the ramp, divided by G, or 120. I'm going to fill that in. And now you guys have done so many of these, you know, you just take sine 35 in your calculator times 120, and that'll give you your FGX. FGX here should be equal to 69. If we want to find the FGY, just use the cosine function. The Y component of the gravitational force divided by the gravitational force would give me my cosine ratio. Again, that's over 120. Multiply those together, I should get FGY is equal to 98. So here's parts A and B of the handout. Part A says draw a force diagram and then draw in the X and Y components. There they are. And label them. Part B says solve for the X and Y components. We just did that there. Now one thing I want to point out, again, this FGY our 98 newtons is how heavy, essentially, the box feels against the ramp. It weighs 120, but if I put a scale under the box right now at this angle, the scale would show 98 on that thing. That's how hard it's pushing against the ramp. It's also how hard the ramp pushes back, because that's Newton's third law. So we know that Fn equals Fgy in this picture, 98 newtons. Now, we don't need that this time. And we calculated the cosine function in blue. We drew it in here. It's equal to Fg at y equals Fn equals 98 newtons. We don't need that. Anybody know when we might need it? What do we use normal force for? Friction. Cor correct, to calculate the friction. We have no friction, so we don't need that part. Now. It's not going to rub against it. But if we were calculating the friction, we'd need to know how hard these two surfaces are rubbing against each other. And that's the 98 newtons. OK, next part of the question is just asking you for stuff you already know. But I want to make sure we're real explicit on this in the way I ask this. Okay? Because later you'll need these two pieces, and I want to make sure you use the right pieces. OK, so you just calculated the 98 and the 69. You did the math, and you know how that is. Like, okay, I don't know, Mr. Morris, it's physics. I know I'm just supposed to do the cosine sine thingy, and then I get the two numbers. I don't know what they mean, okay? Most of you aren't there. I think you know what they mean. But question C is trying to be really explicit. It says, what is the gravitational force on the box in the y direction? That ought to be enough to answer that question for you to say 98. But then I said, just in case, and perpendicular to the ramp. Okay, the one perpendicular to the ramp, that's the same. And this is the normal force, Fn. Okay, so question C, we're looking for the 98. I told you three ways to you know, kind of think about it. And the reason why is because later we will need the normal force. And I'll say, use the normal force and use in Fn equals, I'm sorry, FF equals Fn times mu. And you'll go, oh, I know which one the normal force is. Mr. Morse just had me write it in question C. Question D says, what is the gravitational force on the box in the x direction? And then it says, pointing down the ramp, just in case you weren't sure which one that was. And that's our 69 question. Mm -hmm. OK. Finally, in question E, we're going to figure out, based on this force and the fact that there's no friction, let me do that in red, just because we're using the other piece. net force equals ma. That's what causes the acceleration. We're looking for the acceleration down the ramp. So I want the 
net force down the ramp, the net force in the x direction. I don't care about the y direction because the net force in the y direction is already zero. Right? The normal force and the gravitational force cancel each other. Uh oh. Hi, how are you, sir? Good, how are you? Good. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I see him. He's right That's here. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yes. Yes, you may. Okay, so the net force in this direction is zero, in the y direction. And so we want the net force in the x direction, which is only the 69. So I'm going to have my 69 newtons here. What am I using for mass? 12 is correct. Good. Not the 120. Just 12 kilograms. Absolutely. Good to see you. Time's that. Sixty-nine divided by twelve gives me five, and then nine twelfths. So that's seven five equals a meters per second squared. That part you've done a thousand times. We just need to figure out what the net force is, and sometimes there's lots of steps to it, and sometimes there's one step. Here, there's a few steps to get to the net force. So once we get there, we divide by mass, got the acceleration of a. Quick question. Out of all this stuff. What would change if I told you, eh, let's get rid of this. Let's say there's a frictional force this way of 20. You would have Just to subtract that from the FGX. Yeah, to get to it. Okay, this would stay the same. This stays the same. All of this stays the same. But when I get over here to net force, what would my net force be now? 49. 49. Good. So we would subtract, I would take my 69 this way, minus the 20 that way. We would plug 49 in here and the acceleration would be less. Okay, cool. <coughs> All right, um, question two on the next page. Exactly the same. You're doing one on your own now for practice. I'll throw up the uh, answers here. Oh, there they are. The answers here for number two. If you can get those, you're all set. Okay, and you'll be done for the day. Those are listed right here. Um, only thing I did I, on this problem, I gave you kilograms and said Newtons when it started, so notice that. It says 1.2 kilograms, so that's of course 12 Newtons when you're starting. You'll use the, the 1.2 kilograms at the end, but over here you want 12 Newtons in the problem as you're solving, okay? All right. Low tech video, hope that worked. And there's those. Tape on a trophy.